Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 17 and in this tutorial we are going to start talking about the switch statement. So you guys have already learned that we could use a whole bunch of if statements and else if statements to check for alternative conditions. So you know like I could go ahead and say if something else if something else else if uh, and I could carry on going to check for a whole bunch of statements and then just have a else right at the end to handle everything else that doesn't match any of those conditions okay but there is actually another way to do things because having a whole bunch of if else if else if statements uh, would get quite long and uh, probably look quite untidy so we have this thing called the switch statement and the switch statement works very similar to an if statement or if else statements except the syntax is a little bit different so let's go ahead and take a look at that syntax real quick okay so to use a switch statement you'll type in the word switch and then you'll put in some parentheses okay now in here is basically where we will put a test value uh, or a variable or something like that so we'll pass a variable into here and then after that we put in our two curly braces and I'll break down two lines and here is where we check for our conditions okay but we do it a little bit differently to an if statement because over here we go ahead and we call them cases so we go case and then we test for a value uh, so right now I'm actually gonna we're gonna substitute these black um, text things over here with some actual uh, values later but just for now uh, for demonstration purposes uh, just you can just write value there or something just so you guys get used to the syntax okay so we'll check for in the case of this value we'll do something so go ahead and do this okay and then there's an optional uh, statement that we can put in here which is called the break statement and I'll explain that um, in a little while but for now we're probably gonna wanna use these break statements so just go ahead and include that in your notes if you are indeed taking notes down and then we'll obviously do this a few times so we'll go case value uh, and we'll check for as many values as we need to so let's just go ahead and put three in here for now okay so this is basically like the syntax of what our case statement might look like or our switch statement sorry might look like okay um, but if you you know still struggling to understand let's go ahead and actually make an example of this so let's say I had a variable called apples uh, why not and I set this equal to 10 okay now I could use this variable in my test value here so this is the basically what we want to check so we'll put that variable in here and now for our cases this is basically going to be the values that we want to check for so let's say I want to check if apples is equal to 1 then I can go in the case of apples is 1 okay then we'll do this so uh, let's echo something out on the screen let's just say uh, echo an apple a day keeps the doctor away <laughs> and make sure you spell everything wrong otherwise it won't work okay and then uh, for our next case we can check if maybe apples is equal to five and if apples is five then we can just go ahead and echo something out like five apples that's nice and of course again make sure there's some typos and then for our last case let's check if apples is set to 10 which it indeed is so over here we can echo uh, 
10 apples. That's a bit much, don't you think? Okay. So now we can go ahead and save this and actually uh, try to run this in Firefox. Okay, so I've just got to um, make sure that XAMPP is running. And then I'm going to have to uh, go over to this tutorial. So localhost tutorials, tutorial, this one is 17. Okay. And I made an error somewhere, line 12. Ah, yes. I did not put in a semicolon. Got to watch out for those things. Cool. Click refresh. And as you can see, I've got 10 apples is a bit much, don't you think? So we successfully checked that if apples was set to 10, we'd print this out. Uh, and if I go ahead and I change that to 1, now apples is set to 1. So in the case that apples is 1, we echo out uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So let's go ahead and see if we do indeed print that out. And as you can see, that was correct. That's printed out. Uh, and if we change that to five, go ahead and save this. Click refresh. <coughs> five apples. That's nice. Okay, so now we know how to check um, for a value that we have actually set apples to. Okay, or a case. But what happens if, let's say, we set apples to something like eight? Well, we don't actually have any cases over here that check for eight. They're all f like one, five, ten. Um, so what do you guys think is going to happen right now? Well, let's save it and go ahead and see. Click refresh and nothing happens. Okay, so now we basically need a statement to handle everything else that we haven't checked. Okay, uh, so that's where we get the default statement. So to use the default statement, we just go ahead and type the word default. And then we uh, echo out something. So let's just echo out. Um, this is the default. Now this default statement will only run or only be printed out if none of the previous cases matched our variable. Okay, so right now uh, none of them do match the variable. So let's go ahead and save that and click refresh. And as you can see, this is the default. And it doesn't matter what we set apples to now, as long as apples isn't one, five or 10, we are going to get this printed out. So the default statement basically handles everything else that we didn't check for. Okay, then uh, the next thing I should explain to you guys just before we end off is this break statement. Okay, now what this break statement does is basically break out of the switch statement. Okay, because um, let's say we found, let's say apples was one. Okay, now we've checked for the case of apples being one and we've printed this line of code out. If we didn't have break here, so if break wasn't here, the computer would then go on and check for case five. And well, we already know that apples is one because we found it over here. So why is the computer even checking for case five? And then it'll go on and check for case 10 and check the next case and the next case and the next case. Uh, and it's going to waste computing time checking for all these cases. So you would rather just prefer to have, um, if I can get that back, you would rather just prefer to have this break statement here. So that way the computer goes, okay, case apples is one. I'm going to print this out and then I'm going to break. That means that I'm going to ignore the rest of this stuff and we'll just continue on with whatever code is down there. Okay. Uh, so that's what that break statement does. And the reason why we don't have a break statement in our default is because the default statement is always going to be the last statement in the switch statement. Okay. So there's no point in breaking out of a default 
uh, statement if there's already or a default case if this is already the last case because by the time the computer gets here it's the end so why break out if it's gonna break out by itself you know what I'm saying so uh, that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial don't forget to subscribe please feel free to leave a comment like or share the video it's, it's really gonna help my channel grow and I'll see you guys next time